Hello, this is John Golan. This is part five in my series on introduction to aircraft performance and mission analysis, in which we will focus on example calculations. In order to complete a performance calculation, there are three essential ingredients. First, you need to know some of the basic parameters about the aircraft size and its configuration. So things like wing area, empty weight, fuel weight, payload, all of which are commodities that are relatively known, widely published. Second, you need to know the engine performance. That includes thrust and specific fuel consumption across a wide range of altitudes and thrust settings. And finally, the third thing you need is the drag polar, where you need to include the effects of such a thing as, as stores drag, Mach number effects, and G-loading effects. Now, as I mentioned previously, engine modeling is a central part of being able to perform a calculation for a mission profile or aircraft performance. And data is often available in the open literature for static sea level performance, things like maximum thrust, specific fuel consumption, overall pressure ratio, bypass ratio, and sometimes many other details as well. The other performance metrics can be projected analytically to other operating conditions once you have a engine model, some kind of software that will allow you to model the engine, and you've calibrated it to the published, generally sea level static conditions. Now, when you do this, you have to understand you're not really modeling everything that goes into the engine operation, everything you would need to know to design and build the jet engine. You're modeling the trends. So you're doing a data match, and you're extrapolating from the data match to other design conditions. You won't know keep-out zones due to things like pressure limits in the engine, keep-out zones due to flutter, other similar effects. But you will have a baseline that you will have calibrated against that will give you pretty good estimates for what the other design conditions will provide in terms of thrust and specific fuel consumption. Now there are a couple of off-the-shelf software packages that are available publicly for modeling engine performance. Uh, the first I'm going to mention is AIDSYS, which is published by AIAA, the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics, as a supplement to their jet engine design textbook. And this is to, intended to be a teaching tool for how to design and how to make trades on jet engine performance. It's a relatively simple model, a lot of things that it doesn't have, but it will give you a lot of the trends that you really need for an aircraft performance calc. The other tool that's out there is Gas Turb. It was produced by a retired engineer from MTU Germany, uh, which also produces jet engine components. It's much more comprehensive, uh, but it's more difficult to use. So for the simulations described here, AIDSYS was used. Um, obviously, the gen engine manufacturers have their own internal codes that they use for decades, and there are also government-sponsored codes that are out there as well. But for the purposes of these simulations, again, we're not trying to design the individual jet engines. We're just trying to extrapolate their performance based upon published data. For these purposes, the AIDSYS software is adequate. Now, from the literature, we can actually extract a lot of information about many of the engines that are out there today. And as an example, I've got here the F-100 uh, in the original Dash 100, 200, 220 type version. And things like fan pressure ratio, the OPER or overall pressure ratio, bypass ratio, even the burner exit temperature, after burning thrust, airflow, specific fuel consumptions, both at afterburning and military thrust settings. These are all published. These are all known, which provides us with a really good baseline if we wanted to extrapolate the performance of the engine. Now, you'll still need to make assumptions and estimates for things like component efficiencies, afterburner temperatures, turbine cooling air and leakages, but there's a lot that's already there that you can ground yourself in for many of these jet engines 
uh, that will lead you to a reasonable estimate for their performance at other conditions. So just how good is the estimate that will extrapolate? How much can we rely on it? Well, in the case of the F-100, we actually have a published document put out by NASA, thank you very much NASA, that we can compare to that provides some of the off-design performance parameters. So we can compare a data match to the aforementioned published sea level static conditions and look at what happens off design by comparing back to the NASA publication. And here we can see thrust lapse, which is again the available thrust versus the sea level static thrust. And we can see that the effects of Mach number and the effects of altitude are actually pretty well represented. So, for most purposes, this is a more than adequate representation for how the jet engine will operate. And again, just working from published sea level static information. So let's look at another example. Here's the published information for the GE F110 engine, the Dash 100 version of it. Again, openly published fan pressure ratios, OPER, bypass ratio, max thrust, military thrust, TSFC at both max and military conditions, as well as airflow. We will still need to make some assumptions, again, for component efficiencies. In this case, we don't actually have a published value for the burner T4, but you know it's contemporaneous with the F100 engine, so it's got to be in the same ballpark. You have to make some assumptions for T7 for your afterburner temperature. And of course, you'll have to make assumptions for cooling air and leakages. So let's say we wanted to use an engine performance deck, simulated performance deck as aforementioned, and extrapolate some aircraft performance. So for the F-16, as an example, there again is a lot of published information in the literature. Empty weight, internal weight, fuel weight, all that stuff, you can, you can get that pretty easily for almost any jet aircraft out there. The things that are harder to get your hands on, in this case, are actually also published. Again, thanks to NASA and the PhDs who feel the need to publish this information. So things like angle of attack limitations for the F-16, already published. Drag coefficients for the F-16, well normally you'd have to make some reasonable estimates and extrapolations. Well, for the F-16, you don't actually have to do that. It's been published. Again, thanks to some PhDs who uh, feel the need to be published and therefore advance their careers. Data for stores drag can be obtained, again, from some of the open literature, all of which combined will give us a reasonable estimate for the drag polar and for the basic statistics of this aircraft. So if we put all these pieces together, we can then begin to make some estimates for things like an example mission profile. So in this instance, we're looking at a high-low-high mission profile. We're drawing on a U.S. Navy document, which provides some guidelines for fuel reserve, loiter times, and, and the like. And we're putting that together with a aircraft configuration that was quoted in the published literature for the combat radius of the F-16 Block 40. And using the aforementioned engine simulation, again with some reasonable estimates uh, for some of the temperatures inside the motor, we can extrapolate a pretty good approximation for the aircraft's combat radius. Again, the predicted value of 770 nautical miles and a published value of 760 nautical miles. This is the maximum combat radius you could ever hope to get from an aircraft such as this. So this again is an example of using some basic engineering principles, information that's published in the open literature. You can actually draw a lot of conclusions about what an aircraft is capable of doing. Now, the aforementioned example 
was actually a, a mission profile uh, that was extrapolated from the published data. But if you want to make performance predictions, things like maneuver estimates, turn rates, maximum uh, speeds, and so forth for an aircraft such as this, you begin to run into a different set of difficulties, which is that it is difficult to extrapolate certain components of the aircraft performance without actual flight test data. Again, mission profile you can do because most of it's at 1G. You're not actually going to a higher G load and you're not highly stressing the aircraft and changing its basic performance. So what happens is that as the wing of an aircraft bends and twists under G loading, its aerodynamic efficiency degrades. Now, there are a lot of empirical sources in the open literature that you can use to account for fuselage effects, canard effects, Mach number effects, and get reasonable estimates for things like range, mission profile stuff. But if you want to look at the higher G information, there's really not a lot out there, because to get that information, you need flight test data. Well, it just so happens, once again, that we have data that has been published in the open literature for such aircraft as the F-15 and the F-16 and the F-18, courtesy of researchers at NASA. So there is some data out there, although only up to a, a limited 3G level. But that is really the data that's hard to come by. Everything else, Mach number effects, as I said, fuselage effects, all of that stuff can be pulled from other sources because there are other aircraft other than high-performance military aircraft that are interested in that sort of thing. But the G-loading effects, they're really the domain of the jet fighter. And the amount of published information is much more sparse for these types of applications. So in summary, aircraft design begins and ends with performance and mission analysis. It's where the developer starts his conceptual design process when he sizes the aircraft, lays out the initial configuration, and it's where at the end of the development process, the customer will judge the product when it comes time to put money on the table and purchase aircraft. Performance and emission analysis both begin with establishing a drag polar. Very key, very central to both endeavors. Evaluations for high-performance aircraft are today conducted on the basis of broad performance traits. No longer individual design points, although those are also part of the spec, but the overall picture, the broader picture, is now part of what is used to judge the applicability, the viability of a particular design. And again, energy maneuverability theory changed how we approach fighter aircraft design beginning in the latter 1960s. Finally, for many aircraft and the engines flying today, there is a significant amount of published data readily available. This is true for aircraft developed throughout the 1970s and throughout the 1980s. As you get to the more recent aircraft, aircraft like the F-22, the F-35, you'll see a lot less in the public domain. You'll see a lot more basic statistics that are not being quoted. And the reason for that is to prevent an adversary from doing precisely what I've outlined here, which is using public domain data to extrapolate the performance, combat radius, payload capabilities, high G capabilities of modern aircraft. So they've learned a little bit over the decades. It's already been published, of course, for aircraft like the F-15, the F-16, F-18. But certainly going forward, there's a much tighter rein on what is allowed to be published on these kind of high-performance aircraft. So this concludes my introductory summary on aircraft performance and mission analysis. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I do have an extensive bibliography in the backup. I'll mention just a couple of the sources uh, in passing. In terms of, of aircraft design, textbooks, published information, 
the biggest gold mine, I think, is certainly Jan Roskam's extensive eight-volume set. Uh, it's certainly the most comprehensive uh, resource that's available. You can also look at Daniel Raymer's work, uh, which is a single volume, has a little bit of the uh, transonic wave drag stuff in there that is not as heavily covered by Roskam's set. Uh, that makes a good addition, and it's a little bit easier to read than than Roskam's multi-volume set. And the other resource, central resource that I'll mention, is the uh, book by Mattingly, Heiser, and Daly for aircraft engine design, which is, again is another gold mine of information on how to analyze jet engine performance, which again is a key part to any kind of a full-up mission profile or performance type calculation. And there are a lot of other sources out there as well, uh, which I won't go into additional detail on, but they all contribute to the, the body of knowledge. Thank you very much. Goodbye.